I am the wish doctor. <laughs> that's what it's about, getting in touch with how to correctly perceive A Course in Miracles. Welcome to A Course in Miracles. Actually, welcome to a hardcore course. That's what we call it. <laughs> okay. 2020 of is the year of hardcore course. Hardcore. Who in here is, uh, um, and it's so perfectly okay if you're not, but who in here is, uh, is actually reading the course? <laughs> Okay, and how, how many people here who are reading the course sometimes read the course and go, what the hell did I just read? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, good, good. I'm, I'm, te I'm with the right folk then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with the right, the people who know they don't know. So I'm gonna start off as with, with sort of like, uh, with, with the lesson for today, which is lesson 15. I'm yeah. gonna use that as a way to get us kind of centered today. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by hardcore course is that even though I, I, I love to be very centered in the course and really hear the course, even less this year, the emphasis is going to be on analyzing the Course in Miracles yeah. and more on hearing the Course in Miracles and understanding. Well, I, I, you know, I'm personally sick of analyzing, sitting around analyzing the Course in Miracles. I, I, it's like the Course in Miracles students' favorite pastime is analyzing the Course in Miracles <laughs> and then debating as to whose interpretation of the Course in Miracles is correct. It's, yeah, it's a favorite yeah. toy that I've done uh -huh. and I've seen over the years many people do with the Course in Miracles. You know why? Wow. It's just a trick to keep you from actually hearing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, it's all. Yeah. That's all it is. You know. So, mm -hmm. I'm, for instance, I'm going to show you, uh, give you some tips about how to read the Course without having to analyze it to get what it means. Would you be interested in that? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So remember that the Course in Miracles gives its own definitions of everything it says. Rule number one. The Course in Miracles has its own definition for everything it says. Not the definition I learned, mm -hmm. not the definition the world taught me. It had maybe sometimes, most of the times it has its own definition. Let me give you an example. Lesson 15 says, my thoughts mm -hmm. are images that I have made. So that simply means your thoughts are images you have made. So a thought is <laughs> an image you have made. Now what's to figure out about that? Okay. Let's analyze that. What kind of image is it? Is it a good image? Is it a bad image? Is it a black image? Is it a white image? Is it a what kind of image? And what part of the world did that image come from? What was that, you know, you see like how ego goes totally off. Uh -huh. Where each one of us knows exactly what the word image means. 3D? You know, take 3D, 2D. <laughs> It's, it's, it's definitely high definition 3D. Yeah, that's what we're looking at right now. This is this is three this is 3D at its best. This for those Star Trek fans, this is the holodeck. <laughs> okay. The holodeck is where they can create any reality that they like to play in for a while on this TV show Star Trek. It's really cool. It's like any environment, any place they like to go, the holodeck creates it and then they'll just be in it. That's exactly this. That's exactly what this is. It's, a, it's, it's just a holodeck that we, we, uh, we have amnesia because there was a slight jolt in the electrical force when we landed. So, so, so we've forgotten that this, a ho this is a holodeck and we're taking it too seriously. So, so, so let me go through this. I'm gonna limit myself to 15 minutes whether I finished it or not. May I ask one okay. question? Is this on the workbook for students, chapter 13? Is that uh, No, it's workbook for students, lesson 15. Okay. Uh, in the Foundation for Inner Peace version, it's on page 25. It's the workbook. The workbook is how you get the course to work. Mm -hmm. The workbook is how you get the course to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's analyze that. Yeah. <laughs> And don't, and, don't, and don't forget the first four words, the first four letters to analyzation is anal. anal. Yeah. <laughs> a N A L. Lie. Zation. Anal lie. Check that out. Anal, 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 lie. Zation. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so it's my thoughts and images that I've made. So that, another way of saying that would be my images I have made are images that I have made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since it said my thoughts are images I have made, you could say my images that I have made are images that I have made. Okay. Yeah. So it's because the thoughts you think you think appear as images that you do not recognize the thoughts you think you think is nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you think you think the thoughts you think you think. Yeah. <laughs> and so you think you see the thoughts you think you think. <laughs> this is how your so-called seeing was made. This is the function you have given your body's eyes. It is not seeing. What you are doing is image making. Image making takes the place of seeing, replacing vision with illusions. Mm -hmm. And illusions, the course defines as false ideas that you want to be true even though you know they're not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that another way of saying it is replacing vision with false ideas. So image making replaces vision with false ideas. Mm -hmm. Whenever you don't understand something that the course is saying, and let me give you a tip, keep going, don't go back. Mm -hmm. Because it's gonna restate it again another way. Okay, mm -hmm. they just wanna give you a tip. If you study the course and you think you're going to keep going over a paragraph until you get it, you'd be 300 years. Yeah. And you'd still be on the same paragraph. Right. Because one day, you will probably come to the realization was that you understood exactly what it said. You just weren't ready to accept it yet. Yeah. And so you kept saying, like, if it says, you are not a body, you are free. You'll be tempted to say, well, I don't understand that. Yes, you do. You understand what you are not a body means you're not ready to accept that you are not a body. So you say, I don't understand what that means. Mm -hmm. A third grader knows what the statement, I am not a body, means. Now, whether they believe it or not is a different deal, but all of us know what I am not a body means. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Then it becomes, now, prove to me that that's not true. And then the Course in Miracles tells you right off the bat, any question you ask is in this book. Any question that you ask, the answer to it is in this curriculum. It's not the only curriculum, but I promise you, you can't ask me a question today that I couldn't answer from this book. Now, would you accept it today? Would you understand it today? Not necessarily. So it's not about I expect you to get it if I answer your question. But there is no question you can ask me that I couldn't tell you what the Course of Miracles, one of the things the Course of Miracles says about it. Not one. Mm -hmm. but, it, but the question, the answer can be more frightening than the question. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with the truth. Mm -hmm. The answer can be more startling to you than the question. Yeah. For instance, the Course says sometimes when you ask to be healed, the reason why the, heal the healing doesn't happen is that the healing would frighten you more than the illness you're going through. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Let's say I broke my arm and it was hanging off my arm. Yeah. And I asked the Holy Spirit to heal it. Yeah. And then as soon as I said that the arm went, it was perfectly okay. You freaking freak out. You need a cast in two or three months of physical therapy to accept that healing. So remember that, 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 that your healing is coming to you at the speed you can handle it without scaring yourself. Oh. That's not necessarily the fastest speed that could come to you, but it's the fastest oh, oh. speed that can come to you without freaking you out. Mm -hmm. So you are experiencing as much happiness as you can handle right now. Mm. Wow. You are, whatever amount of happiness in your life, in this moment, you are experiencing as much wow. as you can handle <laughs> right now. I know it might be depressing to some of you. But... <laughs> But the truth is, the universe is gentle with you, and so it's coming to you at the pace you can handle it at. Mm -hmm. You know. So let's go on. So the, the Course says that, uh, I love this, it says, this introductory idea to the process of image making, which we said is thinking, that we do, he says, did you call seeing? Guess what? It will not have much meaning for you. Mm -hmm. So hearing that your thoughts and images that you have made, eh, okay, my thoughts and images I've made, he says, you will begin to understand it when you have seen little edges of light around the same mm -hmm. familiar objects mm -hmm. which you see now. And mm -hmm. I do see l edges of light around the objects that I look at. I see light mm -hmm. around you. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the beginning of real vision. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can be certain that real vision will come quickly when you are seeing little edges of light around the same familiar objects which you see now has occurred. See, whenever I study the Course and I read a sentence and it says this or it, mm -hmm. I always substitute what the this or it is mm -hmm. and I find that the sentence has more meaning. Like for instance, if I say, you can be certain that real vision will come quickly when this has occurred. Well, what this? <laughs> See, well, what this are you talking about this, when this has occurred? I, so I read it, you can be certain that real vision will come quickly when you've seen little edges of light around the same familiar objects which you see now has occurred. Mm -hmm. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Then my ego isn't trying to figure out what it meant and then come up with his own definition of what the Course is talking about. 
Mm -hmm. I love it when you tell somebody exactly what the course says and then they come back with their interpretation of it as if they needed to correct Jesus <laughs> or this truth or whatever word. I, I'm saying Jesus because Jesus is, is a word I'm having. I'm, I've had to learn how to read receive because of the religious background that I grew up in. And I realized that my thoughts about Jesus were images that I had made about Jesus and not necessarily the truth about Jesus. It was just the images that my teachers had about Jesus, the, the, the images that my minister had about Jesus, the, inner, the, the images that other people... So the once you get that you people are just telling you their images, it immediately makes you more objective and detached about what somebody's telling you as far as accepting it as gospel truth. Mm -hmm. See, as soon as I go, you're telling me about somebody, and I go, oh, those are just images that she's making about that person. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Then immediately, I know that there could be another side to that story besides mm -hmm. what you're telling me. But when I tell you, 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 I'm hearing what you think about mm -hmm. them, then I have a tendency to think that's really true. Mm -hmm. But if I hear you telling me your images about me, because everybody in this room has an image about me right now, and they're reacting to the image that they have of me right now. So it really doesn't matter what I do, you're going to only see your images. Mm -hmm. So it's important that I say what I need to hear, mm -hmm. because you're going to hear whatever you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's why you only teach yourself, because you're the only one that's hearing what you're saying all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not only that, but you, what's really teaching you is what you're saying to yourself behind the words that you're saying to people. What's teaching you is what you are saying to yourself behind what you're saying to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I could be saying this is a great day, and in my mind going, boy, I'm really depressed about blah, 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 blah. That's what's teaching me, not the words that I said to you, but what I told myself behind the words that I'm saying to you. Mm -hmm. So you're teaching yourself all day through the mind talk you're having all day, and your world is a reflection of your mind talk, not what you think you're thinking. Like he just said, you know, you think you're thinking it, so you think it's happening. He said, no, what's really happening is the images you're making. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So, but child. Lesson 15 probably has a lot more meaning than maybe when you looked at it this morning, doesn't it? Yeah. When you do the Course in Miracles together, you hear it yeah. more. Mm -hmm. you, you hear it better because it's a book that's about us joining. Mm -hmm. So the more you join, the more you can hear it. The ego can't hide in a joining. Mm -hmm. The ego can hide in separation. Mm -hmm. You know, you, everybody here, somebody here started talking and they were just telling their story and coming out of their ego. Everybody in the room would feel it. Mm -hmm. Whether they say anything or not, part of them would be going, I wish they heard me get through. Y'all yeah. <laughs> know you've done it before. Somebody's talking, yes. you be going, oh, God, I'd be so glad when they get through talking. Because <laughs> you, know, you know it's not coming from their authentic self. Yes. It's coming from their desire for specialness. It's yeah. coming from their desire yeah. for attention. Mm -hmm. Not really a heartfelt communication. Because as mm -hmm. soon as it's authentic, everybody's riveted. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. As soon as it's authentic, everybody's riveted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have to remember that as a teacher, because the temptation as a teacher is also to be the way you have learned a teacher should be, whatever that means. And yeah. so I have to always remember just to mm -hmm. be my authentic self. I'm pretty mm -hmm. riveted, my Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you riveted? I'm riveted. Okay. <laughs> All right. And whoever's not riveted, it's an image you've made. <laughs> I'm giving, I'm giving a hell of a class. It's your problem, not mine. You need to teach yourself more fun in a better way. You got to give yourself a better course class. <laughs> it's, it's not my responsibility to entertain you. It's my responsibility to entertain me. That's why when I feel that yearning sometimes to go out with somebody because I'm feeling lonely and I think I need some guilt. <laughs> Now I want to go out with somebody. You know who to call. <laughs> and I remind myself to take me out. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, so like if I'm yearning, and I know I'm coming from that sense of incompletion mm -hmm. that I'm hoping somebody will complete, that's when I go, oh, I'm going to take me out. Mm. Do you know you can eat a hell of a meal that you pay for for two people? <laughs> My whole quality of dinner went way up. <laughs> it's, there's something to this entertaining. Yeah. And I always she get lucky. <laughs> I haven't turned me down yet. Okay, now. <laughs> People with no sense of humor do not like me. <laughs> okay, so let's go. So it says, and this is more Star Wars. It says, uh, as we go ahead, you may have many light episodes. He says, light episodes may take many different forms. Some of the light, see what I'm saying? Light episodes instead of them. Some of the light episodes 
quite unexpected. Do not be afraid of light episodes. episodes. Light, now what's a light episode? A light episode is seeing little edges of light around the same familiar objects that you see now. Mm -hmm. Okay? It says don't be afraid of them. They are signs that you are opening your eyes at last. They will not persist. What will not persist? Light episodes will not persist because light episodes merely symbolize true perception. Now, if you read in the book, you'll see where it says symbolize true perception, and then there's a comma behind perception. Mm -hmm. If you're watching the book, and then it has a conjunction and. Mm -hmm. this is, here's a tip. You could go, uh, light episodes will not persist because they merely symbolize true perceptions, which means... They are not related to knowledge. Mm -hmm. So those little conjunctions, of course it's so synonymous that the conjunctions could be seen as this means this. This part of the sentence means this part of the sentence. So that means that just because you can see some light don't mean you have no sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have all knowledge because you can see somebody's yeah. aura. Mm -hmm. Or you got some light around a body that you can see doesn't mean that you have, it says right here, it's not necessarily related to knowledge. Right. It says these exercises will not reveal knowledge to you. <laughs> Dang. These yeah. exercises, they will prepare the way to knowledge for you. So the exercises prepare the way for you to have absolute certainty of the truth. The Course in Miracles says knowledge means absolute certainty. So if you can, so instead of knowledge, you could say these exercises will not reveal absolute certainty to you. But these exercises will prepare the way to absolute certainty. Ooh. In practicing the idea for today, then I always say it again, my, images, my thoughts are images that I have made. It says, repeat it first to yourself. My thoughts are images that I have made. And then apply it to whatever you see around me, using its name and letting your eyes rest on it as you say, this person is an image I've made, this person is an image I've made, this person is an image I've made, this person, this person, this person, this person, you are images that I've made, you are the image that I've made, you are the image. What I'm seeing right now is an image I've made. What I'm seeing right now when I look at you is an image I've made. What I'm seeing right now when I look at you is an image I have made. What I see when I look at you is an image I have made. This is an image I have made. This is an image I have made. This is an image I have made. It's not necessary to include a large number of specific subjects for the application of today's idea. My thoughts are images that I have made. It is necessary, however, to continue to look at each subject while you repeat the idea to yourself. You are an image that I have made. That way you can pass the truth and check people out. <laughs> And you can, you can apply that to your own body, too. To anything you exactly. see. Your body is an image you've made. Yeah. Okay? And then it says, now this is the part that's really interesting. It says the idea should be repeated quite slowly each time. You know, this book is an image. Mm -hmm. I have made. See the difference? Mm -hmm. This book is an image. I have made the ego go tilt, tilt, tilt. I don't understand. I don't understand. Tilt, 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 tilt. I don't know. Yes, you do. Yes, you know what image means. You're looking at an image. You made it. So this, so this, what does this do? This loops back to lesson two. I have given everything I see all the meaning that it has for me. That's all that means. I have given this all the meaning that it has for me. So it's an image that I have made. It's a meaning that I have made. That's all it means. An image is a meaning. This is a meaning that I have made. So I made the meaning of Jesus, and then if I had a resistance to that, I made the image of Jesus that I had the resistance to. <laughs> Does that make sense? So it's like, it's like someone putting out a bad rumor about you that's not true, and I treat you like the room is true, so now don't even mention, my, don't even mention Earl's name. But the truth mm -hmm. is, the rumor wasn't true. Earl is cool. There's nothing wrong with mentioning Earl's name. It's the image that you're reacting to. And when you want to hold on to an old way of looking at things, you won't want to hear the new way. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hang on to your resistance to the word Jesus, you would think of a million reasons why you still shouldn't feel peace about saying it. But that would still be what? An image you have made. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, this might be a little too analyzation, but I, I'm curious. You know, say you grow up and your parents tell you you have an image of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You go to church, there's the image. Mm -hmm. 
Have I told myself that image of Jesus or somebody else told me that image of Jesus? It really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What the only thing that matters okay. is, is the meaning you give mm -hmm. to it. Okay, so it, you may have a meaning. Yeah. And then I give that yeah. a meaning. Yeah, because right. E right, because either you accept it or reject it. Got so it. so even though somebody okay. else might have taught me something, I, it ultimately I was the one that gave it enough meaning to accept it and as it's true. Still my image. And it's funny how many people, and right, it's still your meaning and it's still your image. Right. And it's really funny to me how many people who say they're new thought or on the new spiritual path will say that they realize that they're reacting to old programming that they got when they were growing up and still do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still yeah. turn around and feel guilty if they don't, if they, you know, they about something. Yeah. Or still turn around and think this is sinful if they actually were to do this. You know, you'd be amazed how many times people would tell you that they know that they learned an incorrect perception and still use it. Like they'll go, like I realized I got an incorrect perception of Jesus and God when I learned about a punishing God. So if I have a problem with using the word God in my perception, it just means I'm still hanging on to the old meaning and image that I was given. So the truth is I haven't taken advantage of the freedom of knowing it was made up. So when, when are we going to take advantage of the freedom of our knowing that a lot of things we were taught were not true? When are we going to start acting like we're innocent and not sinful and not guilty? When are we going to live like we're one instead of acting like we were separate, which is what we learned? And then that's what, and then that's what keeps you from getting the result that you want because you don't realize you haven't changed your mind. Mm -hmm. You're still living according to the old images that you were made while thinking you're different because you can read. <laughs> a lot of people think they're different because they can read and they can listen to CDs and we can watch TV shows and so our mind says oh you, you really become a very enlightened person I'm not enlightened until I'm living by my truth mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not until I'm living by it that it's true and until the time I'm living by it I'm going to still be attracting to me people of the old images and the old thought system that's how you can tell you can tell the level of consciousness in most cases of a person by their environment and who they hang around with, <clears throat> regardless of what they say. Actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. I really feel like you're one with me. I really feel like you're one with me. Can I hug you? Okay. Now, I made an image that she was safe to hug, and the image that I made of her being safe to hug made it okay for me to walk over and hug her. Her image of me that made her feel safe to do it was what allowed her to hold me. But the mere, re the mere fact that I was willing to get up and do it was symbolic of my desire to practice the truth. Mm. Wow. Because I did something to, I did. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell, tell them the way you were with me when you first came in the door, the first time you came in here. It took me a year to hug you because I was scared. That's right. That's right. And the first time I hugged him, I cried. He said, I'm sorry, I was scared. And he said, I know, I could see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so at the point that you told me that you were scared, then I realized that as a, as a teacher of light, a teacher of love, someone who's trying to practice the truth, then my number one priority became to create a safe space for you because I knew that when you feel, felt safe, you would become more and more and more and more open. So you listen to people because they're telling you the curriculum of their safety. They're telling you what it is that it takes to make them feel safe to themselves, whether that's true or not. And so you're listening in terms of what they're, so if she tells me that hugging makes her afraid, I'm not gonna force her to hug. I'm gonna create a space where she feels safe enough to be hugged. Mm -hmm. wow. And if I don't have an agenda, why would I care? Mm -hmm. okay. Right. right. If I don't have an agenda, the fact that she doesn't want to hug me would have no more effect on me than if she did want to hug me unless my agenda was to get hugged because what am, what am I hugging for? I'm giving what I want to receive. That's what everybody always gives, whether they tell you or not. That's what everybody in your life is doing to you right now. They're giving you what they think they deserve to receive. Mm -hmm. That's what they're, the person who gives a hug is a person who wants a hug. The person who communicates with another person is a person who wants communication. The person who doesn't want to join with anybody around them, they're not going to communicate with anybody around them. Then they get a chance to blame the people and say they weren't free, they weren't friendly. But the truth is, giving and receiving is the same, and you don't receive out of any situation any more than you give. So the person sitting back waiting for everybody to run to them to make them feel okay is a person who won't have a whole lot of joy a whole lot of times. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Because actually people avoid you because you don't seem like you're much fun. <laughs> fun people look for fun people. They look for inviting faces. They look for faces that are looking back at you like that. Mm -hmm. They're not looking for faces that go, <laughs> unless you're fortunate enough, because no need is ever not met. So unless you're fortunate enough to meet a caretaker, <laughs> and they'll be right there. You can in two seconds to, to fix you, because they get their self-esteem. Their self-esteem comes from fixing everybody. Codependency at its finest. At its finest, you know. It's like I'm here to save everybody else, and I'm sacrificing for everybody else. And and so instead of sacrificing, there's a term that Spirit gave me yesterday that was called sacred ficing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, sacred ficing is when you're giving because you want to give from your heart, so whatever you're doing, you don't feel like resentful because you don't feel like you're at losing. So the father that goes out and works for 80 hours to support his family, who's sacred ficing instead of sacrificing, he doesn't feel any resentment for that time he's spending at work because he wants to earn that money to take care of his family. So sacrifice is an attitude, it's not a physical act. It's you're only sacrificing when you think you are. Mm -hmm. You're not sacrificing when you don't think you are. So you are the one who made up the idea of sacrifice. The idea of sacrifice does not exist, and love is not sacrifice. Anybody that's telling you that they love you and they're telling you they're sacrificing for you, mm -hmm. they're building resentment for you. Uh -huh. you know, because they're, they're, uh -huh. they feel like they've given something up of value and not getting something equally valu valuable in return. But let me go on. Mm -hmm. All right, I know it's going to bring up a lot of questions, but I want to go on right now. <laughs> okay, um, it says, it's not necessary to include a large number of specific subjects for the application of the idea of my thoughts or images that I've made. It is necessary, however, to continue to look at each subject while you repeat the idea to yourself. The idea should be repeated quite slowly each time. Although you will obviously not be able to apply the idea, what idea? My thoughts are images that I have made, right? To very many things during the what? Minute or so of practice that is recommended. The Course in Miracles is hilarious. Mm -hmm. That the workbook lesson lasts a minute. And I hear people say they didn't have time to do their workbook lesson. <laughs> I hear people say it all the time. I didn't have time. It's a minute. Ain't nobody that freaking busy. <laughs> Ain't nobody on earth that busy <laughs> that you don't have a minute to devote to your own healing, to your to your own growth, to your own power. <laughs> you just don't want to. You just don't want to do it, damn it. <laughs> just admit you don't want to do it. There's no such thing as sin, so therefore you're not guilty. You just don't want to do it. You just don't want to do it. Why don't you read the Course of Miracles? You don't want to. Why don't you study the Course of Miracles? You don't want to. And you're innocent. Just own your power. Stop acting like things are happening that you don't have any control <laughs> over. You're the one that's decided not to study that book, so therefore you're, you're powerful. Mm -hmm. But don't be blaming it. Oh, I was too busy today. No, you made time for what you <laughs> want to do today. You know that. We always do what we really want to do. All of us. Mm -hmm. I've been too busy sacrificing. That's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I remember we had this really bad icy snowstorm a few, a couple of weeks ago, and the streets were like an ice skating rink, and it was a blizzard outside, but there was a Rhythm Sanctuary dance. Mm -hmm. There's this dance called Rhythm Sanctuary that happens on Thursday nights that I wish I could go, but I really must not want to go, or I wouldn't have, would be able to go. So, the, the, so anyway, this is an incredible gathering. I love it. And a friend of mine drove all the way from Parker to up past Sloan's Lake, way up there, you know, you know, that's where it is. I mean, it's a hell of a long way. Yeah. Why? Ooh. Because he wanted to. Mm -hmm. yes. Because he, and it was, a, it was a ton of people there. Mm -hmm. So when I hear people say they don't want to, something to happen because they don't really want to, didn't have time or they got too busy, it's like, no, you just don't really want to do that. If you really want to do it, I've seen the bro brokest people in the world find a way to get a ticket to India. Mm -hmm. And they'll come right back and say, you know, five, a week ago they tell you they didn't have enough money to buy lunch. And they'll next time you say, where you been? I've been to India. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you learn? Well, you know, Earl, the guru said your thoughts have something to do with your reality. <laughs> oh, damn, I've been saying that for the last 12 years. You can say it too great. No, but if you pay $2,000, you're going to hear it. <laughs> $2,000, you're going to remember what you heard. Do y'all feel me? Yeah, when you make an investment, you, you, put, you put more energy in the stuff that you make an investment about. The most poorly attended workshops I've ever given were the ones that were free. 
Mm -hmm. People are not programmed to value things they can have freely. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, are com we have been programmed and made images of being consumers. Mm -hmm. We know how to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. But if someone gives us something freely until we really wake up some, we don't value it in general. This is a general statement. There are always exceptions, but I've been doing this a long time, so just take my word for it. I've had, a, I've had an opportunity to learn a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you again. I had an opportunity to learn a lot about myself, mm -hmm. my own mm -hmm. ego. Because I never say something about somebody's ego anymore that I don't include mine. If I said, boy, that looks like a really selfish person, just like me. Mm -hmm. That's why I always do it. Oh, that mm -hmm. person is crazy. That's my, just, just like, like me. <laughs> that person is a gorgeous being. Just, just like, like me. me. As long as I don't make myself separate, I won't get stuck. Mm -hmm. As long as I don't make myself different, I'll move on to the next level of consciousness. But when you act like somebody else has a quality, that, well, I would never murder anybody. Yes, you would. Mm -hmm. You have murderous thoughts, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, you might not do it the way that person did it, but you got murderous thoughts, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you do that, you don't have to meet those kind of people because you're admitting that you have the thought in your mind. So there's no need for the murderer to show up <laughs> because you already admit that you want to. I, hey, there's a lot of mosquitoes in their grave because of me. <laughs> the insect world, I am a serial killer. <laughs> the insect world, they got my little face up on every little beehive. <laughs> really tiny. Rod! You know he killed yeah, yeah. He killed he kill flies and he killed mosquitoes and you know. <laughs> so yeah, I've wiped, I've wiped out some forms. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some yes. forms. That's all you can ever wipe out is a form. Mm -hmm. You can't uh -huh. ever get rid of the being. You can't get. You can't kill beings that don't have bodies. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to stab. There's nothing to shoot. There's nothing to poison. <laughs> when you want to die, when you want to die, you have to make up a body. Yeah. So you can have something to die with. Yeah. Hurt with. Go through illnesses with. Mm -hmm. Go through pleasure with. Go through joy with. The reason why we have the body is so that we could have certain sensations that we thought we couldn't have otherwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The body is what's convincing us that we are bodies. Mm -hmm. Because you can feel it, and it, and it has pleasure, and it has pain, so it convinces you, you must be it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we're totally sold now. Yeah. We, we think this is all we really are. And the Course in Miracles says, by the very virtue that your body does not last forever, you know it couldn't be real because everything that God creates never ends. Mm -hmm. So by definition, your body could not be the ultimate reality because it ends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it says little saying stuff like that. Then my mind goes, I don't understand. <laughs> you do understand that the body doesn't live forever. You do under, and so it, so God and everything eternal is forever. So whatever isn't forever ultimately isn't ultimately real. That's not saying we don't experience it as real. We have to experience it as real so that we think it's happening. So I have to feel the pain in the play just to believe that all this is really occurring. So you can't use the fact that you feel pain as proof the body is real. Your pain is only proving that you're fooled. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your pain is always saying you're deceiving yourself about something. Why? Wow. Because you're in pain. Mm. And the ego says, no, it's real because you're in pain. <coughs> the conscious mind goes, oh, it's not real. Why? Because I'm in pain and nothing that comes from love, nothing that comes from God would make me hurt. Mm. There is no pain in love. Mm. None. Oh, but I do love them and I'm feeling that pain. That's bull. Mm. You feeling fear mm -hmm. in that moment. You feeling fear in that moment. You're not feeling love in that moment when you're feeling jealous. Jealousy isn't love. It's calling for it. It's saying, love me, love me, love me, love me, love me before I cut your throat. <laughs> 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 Some people have killed people and said they did it because they loved them. Mm. And that is like, I hope nobody loved me that much. <laughs> I, I don't ever want to love a woman that would, that would uh -huh. love me and her kind of love so much that if she saw me with somebody else, she'd want to hurt me. Uh -huh. You can forget that. I, ain't, I don't want it. You can have that kind of love. Mm. That ain't no love. That's fear. Mm -hmm. 
then I had to admit that, that I have a lot of fear in my relationships. And then I have to ask the Holy Spirit, how can I get the fear removed in my relationship? Because I do feel jealousy sometimes, and I do feel insecure sometimes. And sometimes I, so, so that's just an opportunity for me to get real with myself and let myself know my thoughts about jealousy are images that I have made. My thoughts about what my partner is doing when they're not around. Oh, those are images that I am making. How can I tell if my images are probably not true? Well, that would be in direct proportion to how much lack of peace I'm experiencing right now right. about these thoughts. If these thoughts are making me feel crappy, there's a possibility I should say something like, at least I can decide that I don't like what I feel now. Mm -hmm. And so I hope I have been wrong. I want another way to look at this. Perhaps there is another way to look at this. What can I lose by asking? That's what the Course says you do. You talk about how crappy you feel, then you say you hope you're wrong about it, and you ask for another way of looking at it. And, and people, so people go, the Course of Miracles is too hard. What's hard about that? A three-year-old can do that. A three-year-old can go, I don't like how I feel about my toy being broken, so I hope I'm wrong, Mama. I want another way to look at it. Perhaps there is another way to look at it. What can I lose by, by asking goo goo? <laughs> <laughs> then I had to realize I just friggin' don't want to do this. There's a part of me that just doesn't want the joy and the pleasure and the ease that would come from the acceptance of my innocence. I need to get honest with myself because it, no matter what brought me to the point I am today, the only thing that matters is that I can think. And if I can think, I can make new choices. If I can make new choices in the, this now moment, I can have a different reality. My story is no longer an excuse. Mm -hmm. My story can no longer be used as an excuse, and yours can't either. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You, you got some good stories. The other night, me and some friends were sharing really wonderful stories that we healed and, and let those stories go in a way that I felt so, feel so much lighter that I can't even describe today, mm -hmm. so I know a major healing occurred. Mm -hmm. And so my story is just my story now. And I realized that if my story was an unhappy story, everything I was saying about what happened to me wasn't true. And think about oh, that yeah. one and let that one rest. Say, I like yeah, that. Yeah. If, if your image is an image of your childhood that's full of fear, the Course says whenever you are afraid, you crowd your world with images that are not there. Mm -hmm. So the more afraid you are, the more you're making up stuff that's stuff. distorted, that's not really true about what's happening. Okay. So the more unhappy and miserable mm -hmm. the person is, the more they're not seeing themselves clearly. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so, so a person that's miserable is not a person that's clear correctly perceiving. Yes. That's not saying that they are not experiencing what they're experiencing mm -hmm. to themselves. Right. It's just saying how they're seeing it isn't ultimately true. Yeah. So it's not saying that they don't, they can feel like their father smacked them upside the head when they were 10 years old. What's not true mm -hmm. about it is the way they're seeing it. What it, hold up, what it really meant. Mm -hmm. right. That's yeah. good news. What it really meant is what they're not seeing clearly. Mm -hmm. Because I had, you have to make a decision. Either there's a God of love or a God of fear. Either this is a loving universe or it's a fearful universe. Mm -hmm. And if it is truly a loving universe, then no matter what looks like is going on, even the Broncos losing to the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That up. That's right. There's another way to look at it. Because what we all saw last night was a collective image that we all made. And a truth student knows everyone won. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody who perceives correctly knows there is no such thing as a losing team. That's a concept that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Because everything that happened last night for each individual player was an opportunity to, for them to learn mm -hmm. a lesson in yeah. love that God would have them learn. Right. So mm -hmm. therefore, there wasn't mm -hmm. a loser. The loser thought system is the one it's time to lay down, that there's a, there are people who win and people who lose. That's the old paradigm. That's the old image that we have to let go of. And so The Course in Miracles is a book that gives you new images to use of the same situations that you deal with every day. Because what we need, we need new images images yes. of our lives, mm -hmm. new images of your financial situation, mm -hmm. new images of your body, new images of your health. Mm -hmm. And this course is full of ideas that generate perfect images mm -hmm. because they're images guided by love. Mm -hmm. And then it says any love image 
goes out into the world. He also loves messengers. He says they go out into the world and seek out others that are like themselves and mm -hmm. bring them back to you. Yes. Woo! Oh. Woo! Yeah. So instead of spending all my time analyzing the truth of it, I could be sending out some loving images mm -hmm. that's bringing me back some cool stuff back to me. Mm -hmm. So I could either be using my time analyzing or I could be using my time shooting out loving messengers into my world. Mm -hmm. So that they can come, they can come back to me with a game. Mm -hmm. Like they, they go out and yeah. they go, here's another loving image. Oh, here's another loving thing. Oh, here's a, and they just could gather all of them and come back and lay them at your feet. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, this book says stuff like that. And I'm like going, oh, yeah, that's motivation to let go of my perception of yes. my mama. Mm -hmm. I ain't got time to be spending all that time about what my mama did when I was five years old. Because yes. I could be using this now moment to send new images that would give me a new world that I'm living in right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm in environments that, uh, that I hang out in with the people around me now, mm -hmm. I remember when those people were a dream not only a dream yeah. but an impossible dream yeah. a dream that people I would have never believed people exist like the people in my personal mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and every time and I, and, that, and I was at a gathering last night and, and mm -hmm. people were saying that to me it was a funny how many people walked up to me and said I can't even believe that I'm in an environment like this with people mm -hmm. like this yeah. and I would always say it's because you are like this Mm -hmm. yes. You wouldn't yeah. be here yeah. if you weren't yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason, you know, it, 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 you know, it's like, it's, it's like it, it, and what would be a better teacher than the experience? Because an experience leads to beliefs. Mm -hmm. It's not beliefs lead to experience. You believe something after you've experienced it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, and so I went through enough experiences and special love relationships as the world says they should be done that I ain't doing no more like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to be in any more relationships that I don't feel free and I don't feel innocent and it's a bargain made with guilt where we've got mm -hmm. scripts for each other, where we, we don't act a certain way, then we're going to withdraw our love from each other and I can't love nobody else but you. Forget that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's too many loving people in my life to sacrifice them for anybody's one love. Now, when there wasn't a lot of loving people in my life, I was willing to do that because it seemed like the only loving person in my life was that person. Mm -hmm. So I was willing to go, yeah, baby, it's just going to be me and you. There ain't nobody else. <laughs> there ain't nobody else treating me this good. There ain't nobody else that's that much love and that much fun and that much giving me the truth. There wasn't a ton. Because love ain't sex. It's because I'm going to love a lot of people don't mean I'm going to go to bed with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But people think love and sex are hopelessly connected. So as soon as you say something about love and loving other people, they go, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Don't nobody want that on bad sex you give them? So anyway, <laughs> you ought to be glad nobody else is having to be one person. It's cruel. <laughs> <laughs> most people who are that afraid are not good lovers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got hang-ups about everything. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's so it's funny how we protect what nobody should have anyway. Mm -hmm. But when you're a loving being, all you want is to hear what the other people you love want. Mm -hmm. So you're a good listener immediately because you listen in terms of what that person is saying that they want so that you can see how you can be supportive of that in a way that is in integrity with yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I'm listening to you talk, I'm not listening to you in terms of what the agenda is that I want you to act out for me and I'm thinking about the next thing I'm going to say to you before you even finish with you. I'm listening to hear what it is you say you want and how can I join with you in having that because the Course in Miracles taught me no decisions are made in isolation and all decisions require some form of union in order to to have power. That uh, decisions you make by yourself have no power. Decisions you do and join with others do. Whether that's joining with your Holy Spirit self or your ego self or even us with each other. So when I'm around my friends, I'm listening to here. But here's the problem. And I have that same problem sometimes. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know what they want, they just know what they don't want. Mm -hmm. So the minute you ask somebody, what, you, what do you want, they draw a blank immediately. But when you say, what is it you don't like? What is it you don't want? What is it you don't want to happen? Mm -hmm. Then everybody can give you a laundry list of things, right? Mm -hmm. And the Course says, the world is made up of what you don't want. Mm -hmm. Project it from your mind because you are afraid of it. Think about that. The world is made up of what you say you don't want, projected from your mind because you're afraid of it. So when you look out in the world, you see lack or anger or loneliness or sadness or rape or whatever. Lack, floods, 
And then people tell you, well, I don't want that to happen to me. Notice that people tell you more that they're seeing that they don't want than they tell you that they're seeing that they do want. That's because you're projecting it out of your mind into your world and meeting it. Wow. So stop talking about what you don't want and start talking about what you do want. And the Course uses an unusual way of, of saying things like, I want not to be afraid. And then and I've, I've heard, and I've had people say, oh, I don't want to use double negatives. You do double negatives, you don't explode. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like we get so, it's like, it's like we get so caught up in the form of what we say. Don't say double negatives, don't say not. You know, say not. That couldn't possibly be true. It has whatever meaning you give it. And if that's true, it doesn't matter whether you say not or not. Right. You're the one that's making not bad to say not. Not isn't inherently bad any more than you're inherently bad. Right. Mm. It's just the image that's been made. Mm. Yeah. Right? 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 Yeah. So what do you want is the question you should ask yourself a thousand times a day. <laughs> what do you want? Because everything will conform mm -hmm. to make that happen. Mm. Especially if you don't make a decision in isolation. Mm -hmm. And I'm making a decision with you. <laughs> that I want to experience the peace of love. I want to experience the peace of God. Yes. I want to experience the truth. And you know what? I see you as being under the laws of God whether you see it that mm -hmm. way or not. I see you as the ones who are choosing and creating everything that's happening to you and I don't care if you think you are or not. Mm -hmm. I see you as having a childhood that served you and it was for your own best mm -hmm. interest. I don't care how you see your childhood. Mm -hmm. I, what I like about the truth is it's so powerful that it doesn't require the cooperation of anyone else to be true. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for us to see it, joining is necessary. For us to experience anything, joining is necessary. So when I say that about the kind of relationships I want, I'm not saying I wouldn't like to have a one-on-one -on -one type of relationship with somebody. I'm not saying it at all. I'm saying I know what I want the content of my relationships to be. The mm -hmm. form is a personal preference. Mm -hmm. How it looks in the world, whether it's open, closed, upside down, reverse, twirling, or whatever kind of relationship it is, that's just an individual choice. Mm -hmm. But it's you just only don't want it to cut your head off if and you're sending love. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So, so in the end, it's going to, going to be one thing or the other, a loving relationship or a fearful relationship, no matter what form, monogamous or not monogamous, open or closed, gay or straight, it doesn't make any difference. They're either dealing with some fear or they're dealing with some love. That's all that anybody's dealing with. That's it. So I'm going to finish this. And we're going to, oh, I guess it's good. I'm down to the last part of it. That was the I needed to hear this lesson today. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Did you hear this? Did you need to hear this lesson? Yeah. I'm making a new Course in Miracles contact list for 2012. I'm, I'm, I, I got some separate things I want to do with the people who are coming now, even though I'm going to let people know what's going on who don't come now. But you all are going to be special. All right. Yeah. 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 Because I found out it's easy to do things with people who are present. Okay, now. It's a radical concept. But to give everything I got to the people that are here in my class now makes a whole lot of more sense to me to be trying to give all my energy to the people who are not other than spiritually and in my heart. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, why aren't they here? Let's, let's sure. lose our sleep over there. Yeah, yeah, it's like, well, you know why they're not here. Because they're at exactly where they need to be, doing exactly what they need to do with whoever they need to do it with that's bringing them the exact same benefit that being here would bring them. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's, what, that's what's really happening with the people that's not here. I don't need them. Mm -hmm. And they don't need me mm -hmm. in this moment. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. The people who are not in your life don't need you no more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they don't. They, uh, you cannot let go of what's already gone. Uh, that past relationship is already gone, so you're going to be successful in letting it go. As a matter of fact, you're so successful, it's already gone, but you don't know it. <laughs> so, so, you, so, so you have to do is look forward to the success that you've achieved. <laughs> and one day you'll be like, oh my God, the misery has already gone. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know. I just didn't know it. That's why I was still crying. It was coming from a memory. An image that I have made, right? So it says, um, although you will obviously not be able to apply the idea to very many things during the minute or so of practice that is recommended, try to make the selection as random as possible. Less than a minute will do. 30 seconds? Less than a minute? 
<laughs> just less than a minute to save my life, less than a minute for me to experience eternal abundance, less than a minute for me to have unlimited absolute joy, less than a minute for me to feel totally safe and connection, connected, less than a minute for me to have everything that I ever All really right. wanted in my heart. I'm being asked for less than a minute, and I say this is a hard curriculum. Mm. See that? See how, can you tell, see how your ego fooling you? Mm -hmm. To even sit up there and say, this is a hard curriculum, it's got to be a trick. I'm asking you, he says, to say stuff that you don't have to believe except oh. welcome. Mm -hmm. So how could this be hard? Mm -hmm. You just don't want to do it, Rob. <laughs> you just don't want to do it yet. You're not motivated. A good teacher is a good motivator. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you think you're your own teacher, you say, am I a good motivator to myself? Mm -hmm. Do I motivate myself well? Then I teach myself well. But if you're not motivated, whatever you're thinking about doing is not being given to you by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You cannot be receiving something from Spirit and not feel inspired. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's true. So if, you don't, if you're not inspired about your spiritual path, if you're not inspired about some career goal you have, if you're not inspired about some relationship with a person in it and with you, that is your ego getting you involved with all of that and you're going to regret it. One of the best red flags about whether to enter into a relationship any deeper is how much fear do you have? If you're scared to death of this person, you need to take a look at that because you got some images you've made. You, that, what, how do I get past those images? I need to communicate and observe and listen and ask for guidance. Not making any decisions without God. First of all, I need to learn what a loving relationship even looks like, and that's what the Course teaches you, so that when somebody's coming up to me, I can even tell whether or not they're saying something that's real to me from the very beginning. But I wouldn't know that if I didn't know what a loving mind sounded like. Mm -hmm. So I had to even learn, the Course teaches me what a loving mind says mm -hmm. and what a loving mind does. Mm -hmm. So that when someone's coming up to me and they're trying to make me feel guilty, it ain't no way in the world I'm going to believe that person loves me and I should be connected up with a person that's trying to make me feel guilty. Mm -hmm. It ain't no way in the world that I believe I'm supposed to have a permanent relationship with someone that's saying I'm not free. Mm -hmm. I know there's no way in the world I need to be with somebody that's still blaming the last person they was with for what they're going through right now because I know they're going to do the same thing to me when I don't act out their script inevitably, which I will not. Mm -hmm. Because I'm just another projection screen. They've never had a relationship with another person. They've just been using people to project their fantasies on and to make sure that that person act out their fantasies and then punish them when they don't mm -hmm. and leave them and talk about them. What's a selfish person? Somebody that didn't let me control them. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, read, I'd like, hear all that stuff, and I was that stuff just supposed to be light. <laughs> but it was thrilling me. I'd hear this kind of stuff from the course and go, finally, somebody's telling me the truth. Right. Somebody's finally saying the truth, and not all this old stuff that's not making me look at my shadow. Mm -hmm. I need to look at what's going on in, in my mind for real. Mm -hmm. But I need to do it in, in, in that environment of love and support mm -hmm. and holding space for me while I do it. Mm -hmm. Not somebody who's going to make me feel even worse than I already feel about what I'm going through. So there's some people that never know when I'm having a bad day. I never hear it come out of my mouth. How you doing? Great! <laughs> be a better day on earth than God could have come up with. <laughs> because a person that doesn't know the truth is going to make whatever you're yes. going through real and they'll remember it long after you change your mind and you feel a whole yeah. lot better. They still be seeing you as this little pitiful thing that was going through a whole yeah. lot of problems and putting all that energy on you. But when you're around people who know who you really are, mm -hmm. they know you're a spiritual being, they know you're a child of God, they know you're unlimited, and they know right now you're just suffering from some images you have made. Yeah. Then what they do is they sit there and they say, let them out. Mm -hmm. Just say it just how you feel it right now. Don't try to correct it. Don't try to mm -hmm. fix it. Don't try to be spiritual. As a matter of fact, I insist that you be as petty as you can be with me right now. <laughs> because I know that anything you say is not you. How do mm -hmm. I know it's not you? Because you're a loving being yes. and what you're saying is not love. It's fearful. So go ahead. Let's mm -hmm. both dissipate your fear by mm -hmm. showing you that it has no effect on how I feel about you and who you are. And then, mm -hmm. then they go ahead and get it all out and then go straight back to love, which is their real condition. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. That's how you create a safe space for the people that you love to even express their own egos without fixing them with your infinite wisdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is going to be the hardest thing for your ego not to do is to give everybody the benefit of your wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay? While they're trying to share what they're going through. But what you can do what you can do, if you really want to share, you could ask them if you could share. That's right. All you got to do is say, would you be open to me maybe sharing you what I think about what I heard you just say? Because if they say yes, they really are open. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they're going to say, you know what? I just needed to get that out. 
I feel fine. And if the goal is to get back to peace, only your ego would need to be heard. Mm -hmm. At the point that person said that and you still felt compelled, that's your own fear, wow. your own ego needing some kind of a stroke. That's a reflection mm -hmm. of the weakness that you feel about yourself, that you need some kind of validation. Mm -hmm. So you're the one that need help now, and you <laughs> thought you were the yeah. one that was there to help them. <laughs> Why? Because you don't know how to listen. And the mm -hmm. person who doesn't know how to listen is a person with a sick mind. Mm -hmm. Because listening is just as powerful as speaking. Mm -hmm. It, it is. So if you talk all the time, then you need to be quiet. And you don't never talk. You need to start talking. Mm -hmm. If the easiest thing in the world for you to always be the one that speaks up, then you're the one that needs to be quiet. You need to listen. If you're a person that's always afraid to speak up, but you're always listening, then it's time for you to start mm -hmm. knowing that it's safe for you to share your thoughts without being attacked and condemned and that you can be heard. And I want to give you a witness that someone could just hear you mm -hmm. and recognize who you are, that you could feel safe to say whatever you want to say in my class and to me. Because if I know who I am, I won't be affected by what you say mm -hmm. that's not true about me. Mm -hmm. Because I know it's not true about me. Mm -hmm. So you can say the most horrible thing about me you want to. If you don't trust me, a person don't trust me, it just tells me they're not trustworthy. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing it says. Oh, you're having a hard time trusting me. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for letting me know you're not trustworthy because I know I am. Mm -hmm. I, know I'm not, I know I have no goal to hurt you or harm you or bring something negative into your experience. Mm -hmm. So people are always revealing themselves to you. There are no private thoughts to somebody who listens and observes. They know exactly where everybody's coming from. But most people don't listen and they're just trying to get their, not most people, some people are not listening and they want to get their fantasies out, acted out. So they're not paying attention to you. They're just, they're just thinking about their own images and rolling their own images through their mind. They don't even know what you look like. They don't even know what you want. They don't even, and, and I, I'm not going to be in a relationship like that. I wouldn't dare want to be in a relationship with somebody that we didn't listen to each other and have a common purpose and a common goal. That's stupid. You can. Uh, everybody's got a body, so you can get the good physical stuff that you want to feel. There's no such thing as you know. Pretty much everybody's got a body, so that doesn't need to be the ultimate goal. Since everybody pretty much got one, as far as I can see, everybody's pretty much got the same organs and stuff like that. So you, the body parts are pretty common to each body. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the ultimate realization because what's happening, even in pleasure that you have with other people, the pleasure is just taking place in your mind. It's never taking place with their body mm -hmm. anyway. You're feeling the way you feel about their touch because because you're making an image that's giving you that reaction. Another person could touch you in the same place and you want to call the police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you would say it was the worst feeling you ever had. But, you know, but if I had to automatically feel good if somebody stroked my shoulder, then it wouldn't matter how the person felt about me if they stroked my shoulder, I would feel good. So, it's, so all the feelings that you have are coming from you. The way that you feel about anybody is coming from you. Isn't that a trip? And if you really knew the power of that, you could oh, make yeah. yourself feel good all the time. That's right. Like if you're, all the time. Because if, if you're the one that's giving the meaning or the image to everything that's happening, you could just decide to give a good image to, and meaning to everything and everybody yeah. that you're around. Woo. And because I say I want to love everybody, that just means I want to appreciate everybody. The Course in Miracles says love means appreciation. Mm -hmm. So when it says I want to love everybody, who do you mean you want to love everybody? But what does that mean? What you gonna be doing? What do you mean you wanna love everybody, Earl? Yeah, I want to appreciate everyone. <laughs> yes, I do. And I wouldn't wanna be with anybody that told me I couldn't see Bunny anymore because I'm in a relationship with them. So I couldn't go out with Bunny anymore. Me, I can give up because she's a woman. See, anybody that afraid and you get in a relationship with them, you deserve whatever you go through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Because you already know this is a fearful person that's going to be making fearful images that's going to be attacking you about everything you do. Mm -hmm. So how, what would I do in a situation like that? I have to realize that my ego is just like theirs and they're giving me an opportunity for both of us to learn together how to let go of our fear. Mm -hmm. So they're giving me another opportunity to correct what's going on within my own mind rather than me projecting on them. They're jealous, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. See, that's what yeah. the ego would say. Oh, I'm jealous, but they're not. They're jealous, but I'm not. What you doing with the thing? <coughs> you can't be different from the person you're with. Mm. I don't care if you even think you are. You're not. Mm. In the same situation, the same circumstance, with similar energies, you react the exact same way. Mm -hmm. 
mm. you would react the exact same way. Mr. Not Jealous would be the first one freaking out if he really saw you giving some good energy to another man. And all you've been doing is screaming and hollering and crying out of your jealousy and insecurity, which made him pretend to himself that he really wasn't jealous and insecure because the way you were acting made him feel so confident that he could pretend he didn't have no jealousy. Because you freaking all the time. So why would he be jealous? He think he got you. She thinks she got you. You're going crazy. Yeah, no, it's not that they're not jealous. They're just not being given a reason to see their own ego that's just like yours. Mm. You can't be with somebody that's different from you. You're not with somebody that's different from you. Oh, man. <laughs> and that's good news. That's good news because we just said you are beautiful. You are powerful. You are innocent. And like the Court says, uh, don't do this more than three times unless you feel comfortable yes. with it completely. Don't do this. Of course, don't you do this don't more than four yes. minutes a day. It says it right there. Do not exceed four. That's your instructions. Don't you do this more than 60 seconds four times a day. Okay. However, this the idea can be applied as needed throughout the day. Yeah. Whatever I need it, I'm going to try from doing today. It's like, okay, this is an image I'm making about this right now. That's what you do. It's like, oh, I'm feeling bad. Oh, this is, I'm making this image up right now. You can put it in your own words. All right? Okay? Mm -hmm. I read a little bit over. Okay. I'm going to do the love offering. Thank you for sharing with me. I'm a full-time teacher. That's what I do. So I appreciate the Holy Spirit taking care of me through the people who choose to share with me. And you're innocent no matter what you share because I'm sustained by the love of God. Thank you very much. Thursday night at 1 o'clock is the next class. And I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. If you're interested in that, you can go to my website. All my people out on the net that I love. Or, in this, or just take one of these orange sheets. And we can take whatever your image is, and then I can use the teachers of the Course and my knowledge of astrology and numerology to give you another perception of what you're going through, if you're open to that. Okay? We are powerful beings, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. So let me, let me pass that around. Uh, now, what was, your, what was your question, Adina? Yes. Remember? Oh, okay. it's right. Oh, it's okay. Two bags, I'm going to be optimistic. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to sign this so you can be on my now, on my now miracle list. Okay? okay. Anybody, need it? Anybody need it? They have a sign oh, this year. Are these on YouTube? Like they, um, on YouTube? It's going to be on YouTube too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on YouTube. I've been getting some really, really, really cool, cool, cool reflections back from people who've been listening, and uh, I feel so blessed to when I get when I get emails from people who are in some obscure village in Africa mm -hmm. and who will tell me that they've been watching my mm -hmm. video in or Singapore or China or wow. France or. You know, it's, it's, it's so funny to, to mm -hmm. think now that I have teachers, because mm -hmm. we are teachers and students, mm -hmm. yeah. who far, far outnumber the number of people that are sitting here mm -hmm. in this room. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, it's, and, and so I, I love how the Holy Spirit is using technology mm -hmm. to, to use me. Because mm -hmm. I just, my, my affirmation in the morning is, is uh, God, live your life through me today. Mm -hmm. God, live your life through me today. Mm -hmm. I'm working diligently on giving up my plan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and realizing that it's, this might be something better than my plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I like that idea. So here's our lesson for today. And if we're going to do one minute of my thoughts or images that I have made. Obviously, that was what we were supposed to talk about today. Was that helpful? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Was that helpful? Yeah. yeah. And, and just, just do it. Mm -hmm. A minute. Just do it. You're innocent if you don't. And I'm, I'm always say that because that's the truth. But um, you all are so far beyond where you even imagined that you could be. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, oh, we haven't heard this for a while. <laughs> you have to show Take you. a breath. Take a breath. <laughs> are images I have made. My thoughts are images I have made. My thoughts are images that I have made. Say what? My thoughts are images that I have made. My thoughts are 
images that I have made. What my thoughts are images that I have made. My thoughts are images that I now look around and say, Your thoughts are images that you have made. Your thoughts are images that you have made. What your thoughts are images that you have made. Your thoughts are images that you have made. You are juicy and sweet. 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 So we are making these loving images, powerful images, abundant images, free images, spirit images, love images, innocent images. That's what we want to project in our world right now, right now. Let's do it right now, right now, right now. Right now, let's do it right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. My thoughts are images that I have Make some loving ones. My thoughts are images that I have Some loving relationships. My thoughts are images that I have Brand new bank account. My thoughts are images that I have made. Would you give it up on the spirit? Everybody else to give you. Uh -huh.